All right. And then I'm going to share my screen. Okay, so I'm going to kick off tonight here. We're just going to get a little overview of a holistic approach to gut health. So how does your how is your GI tract design to function and what causes dysfunction and how can we help it naturally? So first, if we look here, we've got a basic overview of the anatomy of the gut. So taking a look at the top here, we can see the mouth where food enters. Salivary glands help moisten the food. We push it down through the esophagus. And then the stomach is where digestion begins. And then that's going to get pushed down into the small intestine where we have some more, um, more additions to what we've eaten here from the pancreas and from the gallbladder and liver. And then the, the uh, small intestine will continue. All of this here is small intestine. It's about 22 feet long, quite impressive. And then it's going to empty into the large intestine and continuing here until, until it's voided. So that's a kind of an overview of the GI tract. When we look at how um, it, it's dysfunctioning, some signs that we can look for, I'm sure all of us have experienced some, some degree or some type of symptom here that's listed, um, abdominal pain, vomiting, diarrhea, a change in your appetite, uh, gas, blood in the stool, uh, constipation, or uh, weight loss, um, just, just to name a few. Of the symptoms you might experience. You might also experience um, some uh, indigestion or belching, acid reflux, um, fecal incontinence, which is loss of bowel control, um, extreme fatigue, uh, brain fog, or, or trouble with swallowing. Just, just some other symptoms that weren't listed there. Now, one of the most common causes here, I gotta love this picture. Does anybody know who this is or what this is from? <laughs> I know we're not, I know you guys are all muted. I know you're all saying Tommy boy. Very good. Good job there. So he looks a little bit stressed out, right? I'm sure we can all relate to this expression some days after work, maybe waking up in the morning even. Uh, but stress is a huge contributing factor to this gut um, health. Essentially, the gut and the brain are very closely connected. Um, other things, low fiber, if we're not eating enough fruits and vegetables, big topic tonight. Uh, dehydration, if we're not eating or drinking enough water, if we're not sufficiently hydrated, um, that could be a big contributing factor to problems with gut health. Um, if, our, if our diet is too high in refined sugars, refined flours, if we're eating excessive amounts of dairy, that can promote inflammation and, and lead to a more inflamed gut, um, which can, again, lead to more dysfunction. Um, if we're inactive, we're not moving around enough, we're not doing any type of exercise or activity, um, that could be a contributing factor as well. Um, if, you know, as we age, our gut slows down. Uh, genetic factors can also be contributing. Um, hormone imbalances are a big, a big contributing factor. Again, that, that gut-brain connection, hormones influence our nervous system as well. Prescription medications are also another factor that can cause GI dysfunction. If you look at the list of side effects of some medications watching a commercial on TV, you know, heartburn, indigestion, diarrhea, upset stomach, you know, sometimes the, the side effects are worse than what we're actually trying to address. Uh, so let's look at some interesting facts here about diet. So processed foods make up close to 70% of the US diet, which is kind of disturbing. Um, so shop, shop the uh, perimeter of the store. Don't go into the aisles as much. <laughs> um, Americans spend about 10% of their disposable income on fast food. Um, the average American consumes 130 pounds of sugar per year. Wow, that's pretty, that's pretty intense there. So that leads to a lot of inflammation in the gut. Remember, sugar, too much sugar leads to inflammation, um, as well as Obesity, so a third of US adults, more than a third of them are obese. And looking at uh, middle schools and high schools, in the early 2000s, there were 60% of middle schools and high schools had soft drinks for sale in their vending machines. So again, a lot of sugar, a lot of inflammation. So here's, here's a list of some common GI disorders. If you, if you read down through that, I'm sure some of you can relate to some of those conditions, maybe yourself or 
you've had, uh, you have a family member or a friend, somebody that's been diagnosed with one of these GI disorders. Um, these are some of the most common ones that, that are out there. Now, looking at incidents of GI dysfunction, in each year, 62 million Americans are diagnosed with a digestive disorder. So one of those on that, that previous slide, you know, 62 million Americans are diagnosed with one of those each year. 72% uh, of Americans said that they've experienced at least one or more of the gastrointestinal symptoms that, that we, uh, we mentioned a few slides previous here. And that was in a survey of 2000 US adults. <clears throat> Now, looking here, how Western medicine will, will address uh, problems with the gut. If we take a look at a symptom, there's probably something to treat it. You know, we're, we're taught at a very early age to go to the medicine cabinet uh, when we have some type of symptom and we find a medication, you know, that, that does the reverse of that or tries to reverse that or settle that down. So you can, you can all kind of see those and you're probably all taking some of these at some point. So, so let's, let's take a look at this. So if we're treating the symptoms or are we treating the cause? Uh, this is an interesting quote from Dr. Frank Lippman. Uh, if you have a house plant at home, imagine this. So when, when a plant's leaves turn brown, you don't paint the leaves green, you look at the root of the problem. If only that we treated our bodies that way. I thought that was a pretty uh, profound quote there and relative to what we're talking about this evening. Now, I'm a chiropractor, as Melody said. We have a chiropractic office here in Baltimore, Maryland. Um, so I'm going to touch briefly on that, what chiropractors do. We, we look at the spine for dysfunction in the spine, the joints of the spine, the muscles, tendons, ligaments of the spine all protect the nervous system, which you see here split into two categories. This is the brain and spinal cord, considered your central nervous system. Here is the peripheral nervous system, which links the brain and the spinal cord to every cell, tissue, organ, muscle, tendon, and skin throughout your body. So there's a further subdivision of this nervous system here that's called the autonomic division and the somatic division. So the somatic division is something that you have some control over, voluntary muscle movement. I got a scratch behind, the, behind my ear, as well as sensory functions. You know, your, your skin have, are loaded with sensory organs that help communicate with the brain about where your body is in space. Uh, circling back over here, we're gonna focus on this is where the gut ties in. And this is involuntary activity. As soon as you swallow food, you don't have to think about it. It gets pushed down through your GI tract. Um, so this is, this is split further into the sympathetic division and parasympathetic division. So look, looking back at Tommy Boy there, he, he's overstressed. So his sympathetic division is overstimulated, the parasympathetic side of his nervous system is trying to bring him back down. So if we look here at this slide, this shows the, the vast network of nerves that are branching off of the spinal, spinal nerves and the, the uh, cranial nerves here that are communicating with these organs. So when, when the patient comes to me, their spine, I'm looking for areas in their spine that are stressed. And those, those areas of stress and dysfunction in the spine can cause stress and dysfunction with the nervous system. So when we do a, an adjustment, we move these joints in the spine back here so that the stress and the communication can be re restored essentially with these organs. So you can see the direct link here between the nervous system uh, and the gut here. Uh, so now I wanna tie this up. A little bit. So the, our holistic approach essentially um, is, involves managing our stress a little bit better, uh, eating more fruits and vegetables, uh, which is our, a way for us to naturally uh, combat inflammation. Uh, drink more water. Um, make sure you're well hydrated. Taking less medication if possible. Um, get adequate sleep. Stay active and get adjusted by your chiropractor. So when we look at my own practice, like I recommend um, you know, patients start with a foundation of nutrition um, that's, that's something called Juice Plus, which Melody's gonna to talk to you about more in a few minutes. And what it is, is a, a great way for us to combat that chemical stress on our bodies, which you know, is associated with inflammation by using chemicals from food that we eat. So if we can eat more fruits and vegetables, you know, we can help reduce inflammation. So let me, let me turn this over to my lovely wife, Melody, and she's gonna to talk to you more about Juice Plus. 
All right. Thank you. Okay, just going to bring up share a different slideshow. Okay. All right. So let's talk about Juice Plus. All right. Our food quality in America is decreasing. So as you can see here, more than half of what we eat is processed. And I think your statistics showed it was 60% even. Um, a lot of our food is injected with hormones, genetically modified, sprayed with pesticides, um, trans fats, artificial colors. So it, there's just a lot of uh, nutritional quality that is lost um, from where we were 100 years ago. And you can see in this quote here, it says that broccoli can lose 50 to 80% of its key nutrients before you even purchase it. So why is that? Well, let's focus on fruits and vegetables for a minute and figure it out. <laughs> so experts agree that most diseases are preventable with good nutrition. And I think most of us agree with that. So we're going to talk about this thing called oxidative stress. I love this picture because you can see that what happens when there's inflammation in our bodies and our gut, particularly there's this thing called oxidative stress that, and that's what ages us and causes disease. And so, but oxidative stress is a very natural process. Even exercise can cause it. Um, illness can also cause it. So as soon as you cut into the apple, it begins to oxidize and that oxidative stress pro process happens when it reacts with the oxygen in the air. But when you squeeze the lemon on the apple, you can see that it can actually, that's what the right side of the picture is showing when you prove to preserve your avocados, your apples, those fruits after they're cut, um, you need to fill the apple with antioxidants, which lemons are very high in. So that actually slows down the oxidative stress process. Um, and what's interesting is that it's not just the apples, the same thing happens in our bodies. So the more we flood ourselves with antioxidants, the less oxidative stress we can have in our own bodies, which in turn lowers inflammation. So when I was growing up, the the food guide pyramid we were taught said we needed five to nine servings of fruits and vegetables a day and fruits and vegetables were only one of many different types of foods we could eat and it really wasn't the focus but now i don't know if you guys know this we need even more we need seven to 13 servings uh this statistic shows seven is for what's recommended for children nine for women and 13 for men so I don't know how many servings you guys are getting every day. In fact, if you want to put how many servings, fistful is a fist size, whatever your size of your fist is, if you want to put that in the chat, how many servings of fruits and vegetables did you get today? And athletes in the immunocompromised need even more. So that's sometimes I feel like it's an impossible feat. And I think, why do we need so much? Why so many? I'm so full, even if I try to eat that. Well, here's why. At the bottom, we can see that produce is picked before it's fully ripe, which means um, most of the nutrition is not there yet. It's just not there because um, most of the nutrition, up to 50%, happens in the product, in the, in the produce, in the last one to two days of the ripening process. So those green bananas that are going to the shelf, those hard avocados, um, all that unripe produce, those green tomatoes even, when they're ripening on the shelf, they're not getting as nutrient dense as they should be. They're also then transported thousands of miles. And this statistic was just updated again in 2020 that 90% of Americans don't eat enough servings. So that's one in 10. <laughs> in addition, what do we buy from the grocery store? I buy the same stuff every week. If my kids don't eat zucchini, I tend to not buy zucchini because I want them to eat vegetables. So we're not getting enough of the rainbow. Now, a lot of us take something called a, a supplement, right? A multivitamin, <laughs> sorry, it's right there. <laughs> a multivitamin to kind of fill in the gaps. We go, okay, we know we need this. We're not getting it. Um, you know, maybe I carb loaded one day or had too much at Starbucks or I ate out, <laughs> you know, I had Chick-fil-A, so I'll just take my multivitamin. Well, this picture on the left shows you what the difference between a multivitamin and actual food. Okay, so multivitamin is a synthetic, isolated nutrient that scientists have discovered how to make, um, I think last I checked, it was like 13 of them. Is that about right? And a handful of minerals and they can recreate them in a lab and then they squish them into a pill and they sell them. 
uh, not only is it not regulated by the FDA, um, the food, you know, the supplement industry, so you don't really know what you're getting in any of those products that you're buying. But we're going to talk a little bit later with Caitlin that studies, uh, some studies have shown that too high doses of these supplements can actually do more harm than good. So there is such a thing as too much of a good thing. Um, the way an apple works is 12,000, 10,000 to 12,000 phytonutrients in working in synergy together in one apple. And I think on the right side, it shows, I think someone told me one time that's like 400 of them listed there. You're not going to be able to read them. Uh, but you can see what a difference it is. Do I want 13 vitamins or do I want 10,000 phytonutrients in one apple? Eat the apple, <laughs> just eat the apple, right? So the, that's that, that. now this just makes the problem a little bit more complex because we can't get the servings we need and the supplements that are on the market just aren't really filling in those gaps. So what can we do? So that brings us to something called Juice Plus, which you've heard mentioned here. This is what we recommend in our practice for all of our patients. So Juice Plus is a way to add 30, up to 30, uh, 45 if you take the shakes as well, whole foods, fine ripe and whole foods to your diet every single day. So it is produce that's pulverized, it's not juiced, dried into powders at low temperatures. Uh, it's not transferred, it's, old, uh, they're, they're, it's grown very close to the factories where they uh, process it. And then those powders, they're, well, first they're IQF, which is individually quick frozen, uh, if you're not familiar with that. That's actually, um, my background is Trader Joe's and all of their produce, the reason, or all of their frozen foods <laughs> are IQF. Like that's why everyone loves Trader Joe's frozen foods, FYI, because it's fresher than fresh <laughs> because they, they freeze it within hours. Um, and they flash freeze it in like 20 minutes and that locks in all the nutrients and then they pulverize it and they dry it, dry it at very low temperatures. And then they're putting it into, um, capsules or chewable form. And children can even take this, right? So the chewables are for adults or kids, and there is no specific um, warning labels. Like they just take half the dose. And they also offer a full spectrum omega, which you know we're not gonna touch on too much tonight, but you, if you have questions, you can ask. Juice Plus is very unique. These are the three things that really set Juice Plus apart from any other product on the market. So one, it's a food, it's not a multivitamin. So much like that previous slide I showed you, you're gonna see a food label on the product, which is gonna be exactly like what you'd see on a bag of broccoli. And it checks all the boxes, it's kosher, it's vegan. Even the capsule is made from tapioca. Um, it's gluten and dairy free. Number two, it's NSF certified. So remember how we said it's not regulated by the FDA? This industry is not. So that's really hard, especially healthcare providers, to make sure that we find brands and products that we can trust. So that NSF certification is the highest world level certification you can get on any product. And they even go as far as offering a professional athletic certification as well. So what that does is they test the ingredients um, of every batch of product to, for I don't know, upwards of like a hundred different things, mold, bacteria, glyphosate, like they make sure there's no pesticides on the crops. There's everything's non-GMO. So they, they test to make sure that, and also exactly what's on the product on the label is what goes into the product. So they make sure that it's all in there. And number three, it's the most research brand name, nutritional product in the world. This was what really blew me away with Juice Plus. I had never heard of We've been approached by so many companies and selling so many nutritional products over the years. And I never heard of this much clinical research on, uh, on, uh, on, a, on a product like this, especially not a natural product. It's just un, unheard of. And in fact, to date, we now have 44 peer reviewed research studies. So that's where I'm going to talk about real quick. I'm going to introduce Dr. Caitlin. This is what the um, research studies is just a sample of where they've been done around the world. And I want to just explain for anyone who doesn't understand research, because I didn't, um, not a scientist, <laughs> the, all these studies have been done by the gold standard method. And this is what that means. It means that they're randomized. So if you just follow along the top, double blind, placebo controlled, tested on the product itself, it's not borrowed research. And what that means is that they don't say, oh, vitamin C has been proven to increase your immunity. Therefore, our product has vitamin C, therefore we can make that claim. That's not what this research is. This research is done on the Juice Plus final product itself. 
Um, it's done on humans, human clinical trials published in peer reviewed journals, and it's done in an ethical way. So on that note, I just want to hand it over to Dr. Caitlin. This is a sample of what all of the Juice Plus research has shown. And the one we're focusing on right here is this last one on the left, positively impacts gut microbiome and digestive health. Um, so Caitlin, do you want to go ahead and take it over and give us a quick uh, sneak peek into one of these research studies? Sure. Um, did I make you a co-host? No, you did not. <laughs> I need to be able to share my screen. <laughs> there we go. Um, okay, you're good. Okay. Um, hello, everyone. As Dr. Loomis and Melody um, mentioned, my name is Dr. Caitlin Lynch. And um, can everybody see that? Okay. Um, and I am actually a scientist at NIH. I am in the TOX21 program. So basically, we screen about 10,000 compounds. Um, all um, I think it's about 25 100 FDA approved drugs, as well as environmental toxins. And I look at how they interact in our body and what they do to different pathways in the body. So I know firsthand that um, what toxic components can do uh, when they're introduced into the body. And that's kind of why I got really interested in Juice Plus. Um, I started looking at the research and um, I of course geeked out because I am a scientist. So that's my wheelhouse. Um, so today I'm just going to share with you one of the studies um, that's on that was done on inflammation. If my screen changes. Okay, there we go. So this um, study was done in South Carolina, and um, it had three different groups in the study. So there was a placebo group. So placebo looks exactly like juice plus, but it is not juice plus and people take it not knowing if it's juice plus or the, the fake juice plus, as if you will. There was a fruit and veggie group and then there was a fruit, veggie and berry group and, and each group had about the same amount of people in it. Now, uh, one of the main things you need to look at when you're looking at scientific research is this thing called p-value. So p-value is a statistical analysis um, stating if one piece of data is different than another. So I'm going to just make a little bit of an analogy here to try to um, make that a little bit more understandable for those of you that didn't take 22 years of schooling. <laughs> so um, basically you have a p-value, uh, you do some statistical analysis on it, and let's say you have a p-value of less than 0 0.05. So that is the first value that shows a statistical difference. So let's say I eat two pieces of chocolate, all right? And Bridget, another one of our co-hosts, eats three pieces of chocolate. So we're gonna assign that p-value as a p-value of one. So that's greater than 0 0.05. So that means there's no difference between me eating two pieces and her eating three pieces. However, Dr. Loomis likes chocolate. And so he eats five pieces of candy. And that is going to put him in the p-value of less than 0 0.05. So that means I eat two pieces, he eats five pieces. So that is statistically different. And he may have a little bit more side effects than I would because he's eaten a statistically different, greater amount than I have. Now, if we're talking about Melody, if everybody knows Melody, uh, she loves chocolate as long as it's dairy free. <laughs> and let's say she eats 10 pieces of chocolate. Uh, that is very different than my two pieces of chocolate. So that's going to have a p value of less than 0 0.01. So that's even more different than Dr. Loomis. And she's probably going to have a little bit of a sugar rush. You know, maybe she's going to have a little bit of a sugar crash later. It's much different than my two pieces. And lastly, I know Easter just happened. So if your kids got into their Easter baskets a little quickly, let's say they eat 20 pieces of chocolate, that's gonna be the most different, a p-value of 0 0.001. Um, and this is for all studies, not just Juice Plus. That's normally the most different a value can be. Anything above that is normally just less than 0 0.001. It's the most different you can be. So whoever eats 20 pieces of chocolate is going to feel sick. They're going to have that sugar crash. And it's very, very different than my two pieces. So let's dive into the data a little bit here now that you understand what p-value is. 
So basically um, what the clinicians did here, they took a blood draw um, before the study started. And then they took another blood draw after 60 days of taking either the fruit veggie berry, the fruit veggie, or the placebo group. And they looked at first um, inflammatory markers. So um, these inflammatory markers are found all over the body. Um, Rantes is actually one of the important ones right now. Um, high levels of Rantes are found in COVID patients because of all of the inflammation in your lungs. So um, that one, you always want to see decrease. And I'm just going to focus mainly on this MIP because it's found in the gut. So, um, and that's what we're here about today, talking about gut health. So if you look at the placebo group, um, the baseline blood draw was at 382 about. And then after 60 days, it was at 392. So basically it was like from eating two pieces of chocolate to three pieces of chocolate. There's no p-value. Uh, they did not put a p-value if it was higher than 0 0.05. So it's higher than 0 0.05. There's no difference between the baseline and the 60 days. However, when you look at the fruit and veggie blend, you can see it went from 358 to 306. So that was a significant decrease. Um, that's like going from, it was a p-value of 0 0.01. So that's like going from, you know, five pieces of chocolate to two pieces of chocolate. And if you look down here at the fruit, veggie and berry blend, it went from 447 to 370. And that you can see the value is less than 0 0.001 meaning it was the most different it could be. And um, that was basically like going from eating 20 pieces of chocolate before the study began to two pieces of chocolate afterwards. So, uh, and this showed in all three of the inflammatory markers, which means that when you decrease the inflammatory markers, you're gonna see a marked decrease of inflammation in the body. So basically after taking Juice Plus for 60 days, these three inflammatory markers were decreased and showed less inflammation in the body. Now, the second thing they looked at were antioxidant markers. And Melody talked about this a little bit earlier. So antioxidants decrease oxidative stress, just as a reminder, and oxidative stress causes inflammation. So the more antioxidants, the less inflammation. So you want to see these values increase. So once again, you can see the placebo values. There was a no p-value here, so there was no difference. However, when you, do, when you take the juice plus, it almost doubled in value. And um, you can see the p-values were a less than 0 0.05, meaning that there was a statistical significance um, increase in antioxidants. Uh, lastly, they looked at micronutrients in the body. And um, the first micronutrient that they looked at was beta carotene. Now, this is a precursor to vitamin A. And as Melody suggested, um, pharmaceutical supplementation of beta carotene can actually cause um, toxicity in the body. There was a study done um, found in smokers um, that smokers that took pharmaceutical supplementation of beta carotene actually had a higher probability of getting lung cancer. So this pharmaceutical supplementation is about 30 milligrams of beta carotene. Now in a normal diet, you get about six milligrams. Um, so that's five times more than what you, your body actually needs. And just a side note, Juice Plus gives you seven milligrams. So it's much um, closer to the actual diet amount that you should be getting. Um, and beta carotene also reduces um, gastric lesions and the risk of um, macular degener degeneration in the eye. So once again, if we're looking at the data here, you can see um, the placebo had no effect, but the fruit, veggie and fruit, veggie and berry blends, once again, significantly increased the amount of beta carotene in the body. Next, they looked at vitamin C. Everybody's heard of vitamin C. It's great for the immune system. It's an antioxidant. Um, so therefore it's going to decrease inflammation in the body. And once again, if you look at the data juice plus again, statistically significantly increased the amount of vitamin C in the body. And lastly, they looked at alpha tocopherol. This is a type of vitamin E and vitamin E has recently been shown to decrease oxidative stress. So again, it's something that you want your body to decrease oxidative stress to then decrease inflammation. And again, the Juice Plus, you can see there's a statistically significant increase 
of alpha tocopherol in the body after the 60 days of taking Juice Plus. So um, just to conclude, um, in this study, the patients that took Juice Plus saw a decrease in oxidative stress and therefore inflammation, which means that they had an increase uh, in their gut health. And when you have a healthier gut, it leads to a decrease in anxiety, depression, allergies, pain, and inflammation, while also increasing your energy, your immune system, your mood, um, cognitive function, resilience to stress. Basically, that brain-gut connection um, really shows in what can happen when you heal the gut. Um, and so just a little side story to conclude, um, this research is one of the main reasons why I started taking Juice Plus with my entire family. And this is my daughter. She's now 18 months old and the only vegetable she will touch is zucchini right now. So I really love the fact that I can just give her these berries that she loves or these gummies that she loves. And she eats over 30 fruits and vegetables every day. Um, and as a side note, also, um, I was having about three hours of insomnia every night or most nights, um, since I've gotten pregnant and, uh, with, with Felicity. And now after taking juice plus for about three or four months, I've noticed it's down to about 30 to 40 minutes, um, which is much, much better. So, um, anyway, I'm a great component, uh, proponent of juice plus, and, um, I'm going to hand it back over to Melody just to wrap up. Awesome, thank you, Caitlin. That was awesome to see, to see that. Okay, and um, we're just gonna wrap up here real quick. Um, share my screen one more time, just three more slides. Um, we just don't wanna mention children and uh, the gut health and all of that without talking about the family health study and the way that your kids or your grandkids could experience the benefits of Juice Plus for free. So, this family health study began 20 years ago, and what they found with over a million children participating in this, or is it a million families, I can't remember, but over the last 20 years, they found after one year of taking Juice Plus, look at, the, look at these stats. I mean, basically two thirds of them are healthier, craving more fruits and vegetables, visiting the doctor less, taking fewer drugs. Uh, so this is an overall foundation for health, but I love that Juice Plus is breaking down the studies and showing exactly what, what effect it's having on your gut health as well. Um, and children's age, starting at age four through college, they can get Juice Plus for free with a, any adult order. So you can talk to whoever invited you to this event if that's something that you'd like to get, get started with. And of course, we can't talk about gut health without mentioning the complete shakes. So this is probably my favorite product that Juice Plus offers. They are called complete shakes because they have a complete amino acid profile. So with the water wash, soy protein, all of these 11 whole foods in it, they are low glycemic. So they stabilize the blood sugar. They're less glycemic load than that apple that is filled with all those phytonutrients. Um, they keep you full for five to six hours. So they're going to help reduce inflammation in the gut as well. This is something we're in the middle of a shred 10. This is day two. And on the shred 10, which is a 10 day lifestyle program where we take two shakes a day, we commit to our juice plus. And um, there's some guide, other guidelines, drinking tons of water, seven to eight hours of sleep and whatnot. But what we do, the reason we do two shakes a day is because it is a game changer for our gut health. I mean, I literally can tell you it is a game changer. Um, you have to experience it uh, to do it, but you don't have to take it as shakes. It's food. So we eat it as food. We put it in oatmeal, put it in yogurt, make little protein balls. I make a chocolate chip cookie dough with it. It's amazing. Um, so these, the probiotics or sorry, the prebiotics and the fiber in these shakes is what's going to keep everything moving through your gut. So you want that motility um, as well. And this slide sort of just speaks for itself. So a lot of people um, who might be wondering, oh, how much does it cost? This is the cost uh, for less than $4 a day or $6 a day. If you take the shakes as well, you can start experiencing the benefits of everything Juice Plus has to offer and all what all these clinical studies have proven. So uh, we are going to stop the recording now and thank you guys so much for joining us. Um, we are going to, okay, let me stop the recording. I'll share. Okay. And, oh wait, no, sorry.
uh, stop share. <laughs> the 